Parts Express presents Don Keel's keynote speech. Now here, here you're about to enter the Keel no spin zone because yeah, Harmon, Harmon slash JBL has two patents, one which is pending, which was issued in 2004, another one which just issued on the ground plane version of this in, back in March. So there are two patents on this. So, I mean, that, that's a caution on this. Uh, here's the copies of my two patents. The one on the left is mine, in my name only. The one on the right I co-invented with Doug Button because the ground plane idea was his. And uh, those, are, those copies of those patents are also on the CD. Do we have enough CDs? I, I assume we ran out. Amy? Oh, you so you most everybody that got it, I mean, that wanted it, got it. Okay. But you can go to my website to download it. There were military prior art of papers in the 78, in 1978 and 1983 describing this, these, this technique. And again, it was applied to underwater transducers. At the time I picked these papers up in the late 70s, I thought there might be some secrets, and, you know, and some treasure you could uncover in the technical paper that might help me design loudspeaker horns. But it, it, I couldn't figure out how to do it. And then I got the idea in, in about 1980, about 1999, 1998, that, well, why not try making loudspeakers based on the technique? You know, rather than underwater sound, it's, it's air, air, you know, it's air, air you know, air acoustics. And, so this is a copy of the, uh, the original paper by Rogers and Van Buren from 1970, 1978. And there, there's a little yellow section over there on the left, which you can't see, but I'm going to put up here. He says, with such a constant beam width transducer, CBT, and the spectral content of the acoustic signal would be independent of bearing. I mean, that's kind of using underwater sound terminology. But that was the, you know, the... the the magic in that technical paper. And those, that's the first time that CBT had been applied to basically transducers. And this goes back to 1978. Now what they analyzed was a, as I say, a spherical cap. And this is a depiction of a spherical cap. And the red is the cap and the blue is the rest of the sphere. And you have a shading. The, the figure over on the left represents no shading. All of the output of the transducer is uh, independent of you know, the, the angle. They're all on at the same time. Now the one on the right represents the, the Legendre shading which is applied. And they do this you know, either electrically or uh, and that, again, that the Legendre shading is independent of frequency. It's not, there's no, no fancy DSP. This is a figure out of there also that shows that shading of the spherical cap. And uh, here they pointed out that uh, that combination provides extremely uniform pores above a certain frequency which are independent of distance. And uh, the beam width is roughly... 64% of the cap angle. These are just uh, characteristics of it. And they also point out that the, the surface pressure distribution, the near field pressure pattern, and far field pressure pattern are all essentially the same. And then hence it has no near field. And oftentimes on a loudspeaker you have a near field where things are go chaotic and the pattern and uh, the sound field is very non-linear. I mean, it's not very uniform, but this doesn't have that problem. And then they point out in the paper that because of all this, you don't need the rest of the sphere. I mean, you can just use the spherical cap without the sphere for whatever that's worth. Now, subsequently, I mean, it's worth a lot because you don't have the rest of the rest, have the rest of the, you know, the sphere that you're working on. The uh, subsequent to that, I wrote my first technical paper in 2000, which I wrote before I joined Harmon. And then I, one week after I joined them, I gave the paper at an audio engineering society convention. And that paper, which describes the so-called freestanding 
CBT arrays is entirely in the public domain now because they, they did not do any patenting on it. When you have one year from the time you publicly, publicly disclose a patent to the time you can patent it, you know, apply for the patent, but they didn't. Now, subsequent to that, we, I have wrote five, four more papers, which are on this CD, are handed out, uh, which describe different versions of this. Uh, and the, the fifth paper that I co-authored with Doug Button of JBL, and it describes the ground plane version of it, and that's what's patented. I'm, I'm going to skip over the, the math here and everything, but uh, you, you guys can understand this stuff, right? <laughs> I mean, there is a real industrial strength math in that paper, the, the first one. <laughs> I mean, basically, this is a, these are graphs of the level. The one on the right on the bottom is the level in dB going from the center of the array to the outside, and it actually goes down like, like 36 dB down near the outside, and, uh, and it's zero in the center. But I've, I've, I have a method. These are also out of the, that paper, showing different angular configurations of spherical caps. And this is out of the paper, and it shows a, a polar plot combination of a whole bunch of different frequencies, and they, the polar plot just lies one on top of the other. It doesn't change with frequency. It doesn't have any lobes. Which is great. I mean, it's a question. Yes, where are, where are you? Right here. Okay. Can you give me a layman's explanation of the term shaded? What does that mean? Okay, shading refers to a technique, oftentimes applied. You know, when you're analyzing FFTs, uh, windowing shading, it's just a technique where you just literally turn the volume down on the speakers near the outside. And it's independent of frequency, of course. Less amplitude. Yeah, less amplitude. Absolutely. That's all. So it's done in a controlled way. Absolutely. Yeah. And I'll explain that in a minute. Now, one of the three loudspeaker arrays that I analyzed with a, a spherical cap array on the left and then a, an elliptical toroidal cap, real fancy words here. <laughs> and over on the right was the most useful one. It was a circular arc line array. I mean, basically, I took the three-dimensional and I thought, well, maybe it might be nice just to have a, a line source that's bent around, and that had worked. I mean, I had discovered that experimentally, basically. And that's what, you're, what I have set up in here. And this, uh, the magic of this is, is you, you take a number of equal, a number of speakers, the same speakers, and arrange them on this circular arc at even intervals. And then you shade it, and uh, the point is that it's simple. You don't have to have any DSP. A number, I mean, the majority of all the pro sound high Q line arrays, the straight ones, Brinkus Hines, a number of companies have them now that you can put in a reverberant Catholic church or something. They're all straight lines with complicated DSP. <laughs> it is what? I didn't hear that. <laughs> So uh, it, this frequency independent shading is easy to apply. It doesn't, doesn't require any DSP. It can be implemented passively, which is what I did. Now, now I'm going to stop here and show you a model. Click the link in the description for the next part of Don's presentation.